find the limit of a sequence. So there's a recursive sequence, or a difference equation is another way to say that. <laughs> a sub n plus 1 equals 1 third times a sub n plus 4. And a sub 1 equals 33. We don't, hmm, we really need to know a sub 1 equals 33. I mean, it's madly important, but you don't actually need to know that to figure out what the, I wouldn't call it the limit, I would actually call it the, um, oh gosh, the equilibrium, because, well, we'll learn about this a little later. But so to find the limit, all you really do is you just substitute an L for both of these. So if we're saying that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to L, I'm just going to replace each of these with L and then plug in and then solve for L. Now what's really happening here is we're pretending like we're taking the limit of both sides. Right? But I would say the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1, it should equal the limit as n goes to infinity of all of this, 1 third a sub n plus 4. But using our limit rules, sorry, this pen is kind of dying. I'm going to grab a different one. Uh, using our limit rules, we know that, well, the left hand side is what it is. On the right hand side, well, the limit of two things added together we can break apart. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 third times a sub n plus the limit as n goes to infinity of 4. And we know that the 1 third here, a constant multiple, since I'm not in front. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equal to, sorry, a sub n plus 1, apologies, equal to the limit, sorry, 1 third times the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 4, because the limit of a constant is just a constant. And this is L, and this is L, right? Because the n term and the n plus 1 term both go to the same limit. So you can do all this, but what it ends up amounting to is just taking your original equation and replacing the a sub n plus 1 and the a sub n with L, or whatever you're calling the limit. So I've got L equal to 1 third L plus 4. And then I'm going to solve for L. So subtract 1 third L, L minus 1 third L equals 4. 1 L minus 1 third L is 2 thirds L. Multiply both sides by 3 halves. We get L equal to 4 times 3 halves. 4 times 3 halves is 2 times 3, right? You cancel a 2 here and a 2 there. You get 6. So what we're saying here is the limit is 6. Now, really, what I would say here is the equilibrium is 6, but it's a, for the most part right now, it's the same thing. You can see that if we start at 33, our values will get closer and closer to 6. Right? A1 is 33. A2 is 1 third of 33 plus 4, which is 11 plus 4, which is 15. A3 is 1 third of 15 plus 4, which is 1 third of 15, which is 5 plus 4 is 9. A4 is 1 third of 9 plus 4, which is 3 plus 4, which is 7. And then the numbers start to get gross. A5 is 1 third of 7 plus 4 which is, I don't know, seven, seven and the, seven thirds is two and a third, so six and two, six and a third, which I would normally not write this as 6.333. And then it's gonna get worse after that, but the idea is, oh yeah, look, our numbers are getting closer and closer and closer to six, so the limit is six. Let's look at this other example I have, which is a little bit different, but still very, very similar. Um, so I've got a sub n plus one equals six divided by a sub n plus one, Right, that's the nth term as we add one to it after that. And we're starting at a sub 1 equal to 5. So here, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to replace my a's for my a sub n's with the limit. Get all my pens before I do die. It's a bummer. It's kind of easy. So, I'm going to multiply this out by l plus 1. I'm going to multiply this out. Subtract the 6. This is a quadratic that factors. So L is going to equal either negative 3 or positive 2. So which of these is the limit? Well, it depends on where we start. Here we're starting at 5. So A sub 1 is 5. A sub 2 is 6 over 5 plus 1, which is 6 over 6, which is 1. A sub 3 is 6 over 1 plus 1, which is 6 over 2, which is 3. A sub 4 is 
6 over 3 plus 1. So 6 over 4, which is uh, 3 over 2. Base of 5 is 6 over 3 halves plus 1, which is 6 over 5 halves, which is 12 over 5, which is 2.4. So although I don't want to keep doing this because it's kind of a pain in the butt, you could keep doing it. I could do one more. A sub 6 would be 6 over 12 fifths plus 1 is 5 fifths. So that'd be 6 over 17 fifths, which is 6 times 5 is 17. Um, which is not what I was hoping to get, actually. Let me double check my work here real quick. 12 fifths. Yeah, no way. Sorry, I'm just making sure this isn't crazy. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just crazy. Like, yeah, really? 6, 17 fifths, 16 over 17. We're kind of bouncing back and forth around numbers that are kind of around 2. Well, this one I feel like got further away from 2, but I think I'm doing something dumb here. Sorry, I got this up though. 6 over 3 halves, 5 halves, 12 fifths, and then it's only going to be 12 fifths plus 1. Oh, 6 times 5 is not 15. Duh. Okay, sorry. 3 and 17, which is a lot closer to 2. So it looks like I'm back, bouncing back and forth between values that are below 2, above 2, below 2, above 2, below 2, above 2, and they're getting closer and closer to 2. So I would say here the limit is 2. That's not super precise, but that's kind of the idea. So I'll leave it.